Welcome to the War Academy channel. When talking about World War II, Hitler's obsession with German weapons, especially their quality and size, is often highlighted. Although this is commented with a mocking and nonsensical vision, today we are going to explain what was the real reason for this way of thinking, and how he intended to win the contest from 1943. Before going into an analysis of this issue, in which we are going to use private conversations that the German leader had with other important personalities of the Wehrmacht, we are going to put ourselves in context. For this we must place ourselves at the beginning of 1943, just at the moment in which the Second Great Campaign against the Soviet Union has failed. At this time, the situation for Germany was very complicated. First of all, they had their best army trapped in Stalingrad, with no real chance of rescuing it. Secondly, all the objectives set for that summer campaign of 1942, one of the most important being to seize the oil wells in the Caucasus, had failed miserably. Third, they had lost the trust of all their allies who from this point on began to distance themselves from Germany. Finally, its entire southern flank was in a deep retreat that seemed to have no end before the enormous Soviet onslaught. But the most important of all is not any of these points, but the conclusion that is drawn from them. And it is that although the main objective of Germany and Russia had been to end the Soviet military capacity, now it was clear that the Red Army was stronger than ever and without any sign of collapse. In short, this situation led to a war of attrition in which Germany had a very difficult time gaining victory. Given this, let's return to the issue that has brought us to this program, and that is, how did Hitler intend to win this type of war? On February 18, 1943, Hitler was in Manstein's advanced headquarters on the Eastern Front, specifically in the city of Zaporozhye. There he was debating with the marshal on matters related to the situation of the war and the next steps to be taken. Let us remember, before analyzing the conversation, that the situation at that time was so bad that Hitler was seriously considering dismissing Manstein, and the next day, he had to be evacuated from the place in a hurry, given the danger of the Soviet presence at about 60 km from the place. In any case, if you want to get a complete idea of the evolution of operations during those months, I leave you in the description the program that we recently uploaded about Manstein's counteroffensive in Kharkov. Returning to the meeting, in which a general balance of the situation was being made, Hitler said. This year we cannot undertake any major operation. It seems to me that the only thing we can do is land some small blow. At the beginning of May we will have 98 Ferdinands, with 150 Tigers, between 200 and 250 Panthers and another series of smaller tanks. Most of these weapons are invulnerable and their combat power is unmatched. The Ferdinands, for example, can take down a tank from 2,000 meters. With all this huge number of new weapons, we may be able to retake the initiative. With these super heavy tanks we will be able to open at least a gap in the front, and we will be in a position to launch a new attack. If the Tigers didn't cut it south of Lake Ladiga last fall, it was because they had some teething problems, but now they're the best tanks in the world. They are indestructible. Porsche's 72 Ferdinands are going to be unrivaled on the battlefield. If we gather 300 or 400 such armor, it is certain that we will be victorious wherever we attack. We must achieve our objectives based on the superiority of our weapons. Based on men we will not be able to achieve much because we have very few. But if we gather the best and heaviest weapons, we will regain the initiative. In these words we can clearly see what the German leader was thinking at this time, and on what elements he placed his hopes for him. From this point and until the end of the contest, he will bet on projects in which he is going to look for the definitive weapon that can give victory to Germany. His idea was basically to form combat units that were equipped with the most advanced equipment possible, which would lead him to be invincible on the battlefield. The concept of a super tank whose armor was impenetrable, and with a deadly cannon, was a goal that began to be pursued more vigorously. Very possibly the armored Jagutiger and Panzer 8 Mouse are the culmination of this way of thinking, which concluded with the construction of these enormous beasts on tracks. With a 128mm gun, and a maximum frontal armor of between 250 and 400mm respectively, 
These panzers were going to be unrivaled on the battlefield, or so the theory goes. However, the implementation would offer a very different result than expected. In any case, let's do an exercise of imagination and try to represent this concept. Imagine a panzer division made up of 200 Tiger IIs, or 200 Ferdinands, or even 200 Jagudigers, marching across the battlefield. It is clear that in a frontal clash against other enemy formations of Sherman's or T-34, they will not have any type of rival. But aren't there other methods to kill them? You can attack them from the air with massive bombers, or use artillery strikes on them. Furthermore, if direct combat against them is impossible, the enemy can always evade engagement, taking advantage of their increased mobility, leaving these units isolated and encircled, with their ammunition and fuel supplies depleted. There is no doubt that low mobility is always the weak point of these super heavy tanks, and can easily be used against them. Still, if these divisions can manage to achieve local success, what happens on the other thousands of miles of front, where the enemy is pressing? Let us now see another excerpt from one of these conversations between Hitler and Manstein, also produced in the same Zaporozhye barracks. This took place on March 10, 1943, when the situation was much calmer, and the German units were again attacking. On this occasion, the German leader said, Maintaining prolonged advances we must continue with the initiative and try to maintain the loss ratio of 1 to 10. We must systematically weaken the Russians, especially relying more on modern weapons than on the number of divisions. Once we achieve this, we have to stand and defend ourselves. This was not the only occasion on which Hitler alluded to this matter either, but rather the first of many. And it is that no more and no less, just as he indicated, if they wanted to win this war of attrition they had to make a number of casualties much higher than their enemies, than the ones they themselves had. In his words, for every fallen German soldier, 10 Soviets had to fall, and the same goes for every plane or tank. This is only possible if you apply strategies and tactics far superior to those of the enemy, or have weapons that are of a much more advanced quality than your opponents. Of course, none of these options guarantee success. What was shown was that Hitler had less and less confidence in these elaborate strategies that some of his generals proposed to him, and he gradually limited the war of mobility, starting to promote orders of extreme resistance without giving up territory. On the other hand, although his heaviest panzers such as Tiger I or Tiger II were superior to those of the enemy, their production was not enough to allow major offensives as he intended, nor to defend positions infinitely. With regard to the latest super-heavy armored projects such as the Jagutiger or the Mouse, either they did not see combat, or they were an absolute failure due to their different mechanical failures. As we all know, even today there is still an intense debate on whether Germany should have opted for quantity, instead of quality. Not going to assess here not even that it would have been better or not, we are going to ask ourselves the following question. Did Germany have the capacity to double or triple its production of battle tanks, even making them of poorer quality? Did they have the capacity to train so many panzer crews to man all the armor efficiently? Did they have the fuel capacity to keep them all going? And finally, did they have all the necessary equipment in trucks and all kinds of armored vehicles, which are also necessary in these panzer divisions? Well, I leave each one to answer these questions as they deem most convenient. And I invite you to watch the program that we recently uploaded about Manstein's counteroffensive in Kharkov, this being one of the most important moments of World War II. Of course and if you want to expand this information, I show you and recommend the books on which we have relied for this program, these being the Marshal's own memoirs, and Manstein, and the Third Battle of Kharkov. We say goodbye here. Many thanks to everyone, especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and see you in the next one. See you soon.